Hey there, you're looking kind of cute. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my other socials for more. Enjoy. Three figures huddled together on the creaky porch swing of an old Victorian house, their laughter echoing through the quiet street. I can't believe we're really doing this, Gina whispered, her eyes sparkling with excitement. She clutched a worn sketchbook to her chest, fingers tracing the frayed edges. It's now or never, Mark replied, his voice cracking slightly. He fidgeted with the hem of his oversized sweater, pulling it down over his hands. Tom nodded, a mischievous grin spreading across his face. We've been planning this for weeks, no backing out now. The trio had been inseparable since kindergarten, bound together by their shared love of art and their status as outcasts in their small conservative community. Now, on the cusp of their senior year of high school, they were about to embark on their most daring adventure yet. Okay, let's go over the plan one more time, Gina said, flipping open her sketchbook to reveal a detailed map of the town. We hit the water tower first, then the abandoned factory, and finally the old bridge. Mark's eyes widened. Are you sure about the bridge? That's right in the center of town. That's the point, Tom interjected, his voice brimming with determination. We want everyone to see it. Gina nodded, her curly hair bouncing with the movement. Exactly. This is our chance to make a statement, to show everyone who we really are. The plan was simple yet audacious. They would spend the night creating massive murals across town, each piece a reflection of their true selves, the selves they had kept hidden for so long. As they gathered their supplies, spray paint, brushes, and stencils, a comfortable silence fell over them, each lost in thought about the journey that had led them to this moment. For Gina, art had always been an escape from the expectations placed upon her. As the only child of two high-powered lawyers, she was constantly pushed to follow in their footsteps. But in the quiet moments between debate club meetings and SAT prep courses, she found solace in her sketchbook, creating vibrant worlds that existed only in her imagination. Mark's relationship with art was more complicated. From a young age, he had felt a disconnect between his physical appearance and his true self. It was only through drawing that he could express the person he knew he was meant to be. His sketchbooks were filled with self-portraits, not of the boy the world saw, but of the girl he longed to become. Tom, always the most outgoing of the trio, used his art as a weapon against the bullies who tormented him. His caricatures and biting political cartoons adorned the pages of the school newspaper, earning him both admirers and enemies. As they crept through the darkened streets, their hearts pounded with a mixture of fear and exhilaration. The weight of their backpacks filled with art supplies felt like armor against the judgmental world they were about to confront. The water tower loomed before them, a hulking silhouette against the star-studded sky. Gina pulled out a coil of rope from her bag, expertly tying a series of knots. Who wants to go first? She asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Mark stepped forward, surprising both of his friends. Usually the most cautious of the group, there was a newfound determination in his eyes. I will, he said, gripping the rope tightly. As Mark began his ascent, Tom turned to Gina. Do you think this will really change anything? Gina's gaze remained fixed on Mark's climbing form. I don't know, she admitted but we have to try. One by one, they scaled the tower. At the top, they paused for a moment, taking in the view of their sleepy town spread out below them. Then, without a word, they got to work. Gina's mural was a riot of color and movement abstract shapes that seemed to dance across the metal surface. It was a representation of the chaotic beauty she saw in the world, a stark contrast to the ordered life her parents had planned for her. Mark's piece was more subdued, but no less powerful. A face emerged from the shadows, half hidden, eyes closed, but unmistakably feminine. It was a portrait of his true self, the one he had kept hidden for so long. Tom's mural was bold and confrontational. 
Words and images intertwined, challenging the viewer to question their preconceptions about identity and self-expression. As the first light of dawn began to creep over the horizon, they stood back to admire their work. The water tower, once a blank canvas, now stood as a testament to their artistry and courage. It's beautiful, Gina breathed, her eyes filling with tears. Mark nodded, unable to speak. For the first time in his life, he felt seen. Tom threw his arms around his friend's shoulders. We did it, he said, his voice thick with emotion. We really did it. As they made their way down the tower, a sense of lightness filled them. Whatever consequences awaited them, they knew they had taken the first step towards living authentically. The next few weeks passed in a blur of whispers and sidelong glances. Their art had caused quite a stir in Millbrook, with opinions ranging from outrage to grudging admiration. The local newspaper ran a front-page story about the vandalism, complete with quotes from scandalized town officials. But for Gina, Mark, and Tom, the aftermath of their nighttime adventure marked a turning point. They walked the halls of their high school with newfound confidence, no longer content to blend into the background. Gina threw herself into her art with renewed passion, spending hours in the school's art room experimenting with new techniques and mediums. Her teachers, who had always seen potential in her work, were amazed by the sudden leap in quality and emotional depth. Mark, inspired by the positive response to his mural, began to explore his identity more openly. He started wearing subtle makeup to school and growing out his hair. Though he faced some teasing, he found unexpected allies among his classmates who admired his bravery. Tom's sharp wit and artistic talent caught the attention of a local political cartoonist who offered him an internship at the city newspaper. His satirical drawings became a regular feature, sparking conversations about social issues throughout the community. As their senior year drew to a close, the trio faced the bittersweet reality of their impending separation. Gina had been accepted to a prestigious art school in New York while Tom was heading to California to study journalism. Mark had decided to take a gap year, using the time to fully explore his gender identity and transition. On their last night together before leaving for college, they gathered once more on Gina's porch swing. The air was thick with nostalgia and unspoken fears about the future. Promise me we'll always stay in touch, Gina said, her voice wavering slightly. Mark reached out and squeezed her hand. No matter what happens, you two will always be my family. Tom nodded solemnly. Agreed. We've been through too much together to let distance come between us. As they sat there watching the fireflies dance in the gathering darkness, each of them silently vowed to hold on to the bonds they had forged through years of friendship and shared struggles. The years that followed were a whirlwind of new experiences, challenges, and personal growth. Gina threw herself into her studies, pushing the boundaries of her artistic style and gaining recognition in the competitive New York art scene. Her unique blend of abstract expressionism and social commentary caught the eye of several prominent galleries, and soon she was juggling coursework with her first solo exhibitions. Tom's natural charisma and sharp journalistic instincts served him well in California. He quickly rose through the ranks at the college newspaper, eventually landing an internship at a major national publication. His articles on LGBTQ issues and social justice gained a following, and he found himself becoming a voice for his generation. Mark's journey was perhaps the most profound. During his gap year, he began the process of transitioning, changing his name to Maeve and embracing her true identity as a woman. The support of her friends, coupled with the freedom to explore her identity away from the confines of their small town, gave her the courage to live authentically. Despite the distance and their busy lives, the trio made a point of staying connected. Weekly video calls became a sacred ritual, a chance to share their triumphs and struggles, to offer support and celebrate each other's growth. It was during one of these calls, nearly five years after they had left Millbrook, that Gina dropped a bombshell. I'm pregnant, she blurted out, her face a mixture of excitement and terror. 
Maeve and Tom's jaws dropped in unison. Oh my God, Gina, Maeve exclaimed, her voice filled with concern and joy. That's amazing. How are you feeling? Gina ran a hand through her unruly curls, a nervous habit she had never quite shaken. Honestly? Terrified? Excited? Overwhelmed? I never thought I'd be a mother, especially not now when my career is just taking off. Tom leaned closer to his camera, his brow furrowed with concern. What about the father? Is he in the picture? A shadow crossed Gina's face. He's not involved. It was a brief thing, and when I told him, he made it clear he wasn't interested in being a parent. A moment of silence fell over the group as they absorbed this information. Well, screw him, Maeve said firmly. You've got us. We'll be there for you every step of the way. Tom nodded emphatically. Absolutely. Your kid is going to have the coolest aunts in the world. Gina's eyes filled with tears, a watery smile spreading across her face. What would I do without you two? As the months passed, Gina's pregnancy became a focal point for the friends. Maeve and Tom took turns visiting New York, helping Gina prepare for the baby's arrival and offering emotional support. They painted the nursery together, transforming a spare room in Gina's small apartment into a whimsical wonderland filled with characters from their favorite childhood stories. It was during one of these visits, as they were putting the finishing touches on a mural of a magical forest, that Tom made an announcement of his own. I've been doing a lot of thinking, he said, carefully adding details to a painted leaf, and I've realized something about myself. Gina and Maeve exchanged glances, sensing the gravity in their friend's tone. I think, no, I know, Tom continued, taking a deep breath, that I'm transgender. Like you, Maeve. I've always felt different and watching your journey helped me understand my own feelings. The room fell silent for a moment, broken only by the sound of Gina's paintbrush clattering to the floor. Oh, Tom, she said, waddling over to envelop him in a hug, her pregnant belly pressing between them. I'm so proud of you for figuring this out. Maeve joined the hug, her eyes shining with unshed tears. Welcome to the club, sis, she said, her voice thick with emotion. Tom, who would soon choose the name Tara, let out a shaky laugh. I was so nervous to tell you both. I didn't want to feel like I was copying you, Maeve. Maeve shook her head firmly. Never! Your journey is your own, and now we can support each other through this. As they stood there, arms intertwined, the baby kicked, as if sensing the momentous occasion. Gina laughed, placing a hand on her swollen belly. I think the little one approves. The arrival of Gina's daughter, Luna, marked the beginning of a new chapter in their lives. The tiny, dark-haired baby became the center of their world, a living embodiment of the love and support they had always given each other. Maeve and Tara took their roles as aunts seriously, showering Luna with affection and spoiling her rotten at every opportunity. They were there for her first steps, her first words, and countless milestones in between. As Luna grew, so did the bond between Maeve and Tara. Their shared experiences as trans women created a unique understanding between them, and they often found themselves turning to each other for advice and support as they navigated their transitions. One crisp autumn day, as they watched Luna play in a pile of leaves in Central Park, Tara turned to Maeve with a thoughtful expression. You know, I never thought I'd say this, but I'm actually considering moving back to Millbrook, she said, her voice tinged with surprise at her own words. Maeve's eyebrows shot up. Really? What brought this on? Tara shrugged, her gaze fixed on Luna's gleeful face. I've been thinking a lot about identity lately, not just gender identity, but where we come from, our roots, and I realized that as much as I've tried to run from it, Millbrook is a part of who I am. But what about all the close-mindedness we faced there? Maeve asked, concern evident in her voice. That's just it, Tara replied. I want to go back and be the person I wish I had seen when I was growing up. To show kids like us that it's possible to be true to yourself, even in a place like Millbrook. Maeve nodded slowly, understanding dawning in her eyes. That's actually really beautiful, Tara. 
As they continued to watch Luna play, a comfortable silence fell between them. The autumn sun cast a golden glow over the park, painting everything in warm, nostalgic tones. You know, Maeve said after a while, I've been thinking about making some changes in my life, too. Tara turned to her, curiosity piqued. Oh? Maeve took a deep breath as if stealing herself for what she was about to say. I think I'm ready to pursue gender confirmation surgery. I've been on hormones for years now, but this feels like the final step in aligning my body with who I am inside. Tara reached out and squeezed Maeve's hand. That's huge, Maeve. I'm so happy for you. Thanks, Maeve said, a mix of excitement and nervousness in her voice. It's scary, but it feels right. As they sat there, hand in hand, watching Luna's carefree play, both women felt a sense of peace wash over them. They had come so far from those scared teenagers spray-painting the water tower, yet in many ways they were still the same. Brave, creative souls determined to live life on their own terms. The sound of Gina's laughter drifted over to them as she joined Luna in the leaf pile, her artist's smock covered in a rainbow of paint splatters. The sight of their friend, so at ease in her role as a mother and successful artist, filled them both with warmth. We really did it, didn't we? Tara mused, a hint of wonder in her voice. We became the people we always dreamed of being. Maeve nodded, a smile playing at the corners of her mouth, and we did it together. As the afternoon light began to fade, casting long shadows across the park, the three friends gathered their things and headed back to Gina's apartment. Luna, tired from her play, dozed in her mother's arms. That evening, as they sat around Gina's dining table sharing a meal and a bottle of wine, the conversation turned to the future. Tara spoke more about her plans to return to Millbrook, her determination to make a difference in their hometown evident in every word. Gina listened intently, her brow furrowed in thought. You know, she said, swirling the wine in her glass, I've been thinking about doing some community outreach here in the city, maybe starting an art program for LGBTQ plus youth. Maeve's face lit up. That's an amazing idea, Gina. Your story would be so inspiring to kids struggling with their identities. Thanks. Gina said, a hint of a blush coloring her cheeks. I just keep thinking about how much it would have meant to us to have someone to look up to when we were younger. As the night wore on, their conversation drifted to memories of their childhood, of the struggles and triumphs that had shaped them. They laughed about their misadventures, cringed at their fashion choices, and marveled at how far they had come. In the quiet moments between stories, each of them felt a profound sense of gratitude for the unwavering support they had found in each other. Through all the changes, all the hardships, their bond had remained unbreakable. As Maeve and Tara prepared to leave, hugs were exchanged and promises made to meet again soon. Standing in the doorway, Gina watched her friends disappear down the hallway, their laughter echoing off the walls. Closing the door softly, she padded over to Luna's room, peeking in at her sleeping daughter. In the soft glow of the nightlight, Gina could see traces of herself in Luna's features, the same stubborn chin, the same wild curls. Sweet dreams, little one, she whispered, gently stroking Luna's cheek. May you grow up to be as brave and true as your aunts. As she climbed into bed that night, Gina's mind was filled with images of the future, of Luna growing up surrounded by love and acceptance, of Tara making waves in Millbrook, of Maeve finally feeling at home in her own body. And through it all, she saw the three of them, standing side by side just as they had all those years ago on that water tower. No matter where life took them, no matter what challenges lay ahead, they would face it together, bound by love, art, and the unshakable belief that everyone deserves to live as their true selves. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out my other socials if you want more wonderful content, early access, behind the scenes, and more. All links down below.